Thank you so much for the introduction. <clears throat> and, and I was actually just chatting with my boys and, uh, you know, about this whole digital fashion trend. Uh, so they, they play a lot of Fortnite, I don't know, it like, seems to be a very popular game among, among you know, youngers. And there's like Renegade Raider, that's like the one favorite skin. And then there's Dojo, which looks like a dog. Apparently that's the other boy's favorite skin. So this is sort of say real. Um, you know, maybe not my type, uh, but, but I think definitely in the sort of say next, next generation. Um, thank you for the opportunity to talk a little bit about, uh, about Swapi, and, and maybe this sounds a bit boring because, you know, this is almost sort of say uh, uh, like a, a work in progress update on actually how to build a company um, with many, many like small things that, that we have learned along the way of actually doing something like, you know, getting into these businesses that, that Oscar uh, on turn talked about. Um, so maybe a little bit before, before heading into, into Swapi, uh, most people probably don't know me. Um, so I started to work in mobility with Nokia, which gave me a very early insight into like smartphones and, and the technology that sort of say dominates our life today. Um, and then I moved uh, to, uh, to, uh, to uh, Nokia's uh, navigation business uh, that was built over the years in Berlin. So I spent about four years, so say commuting between Finland and Berlin. Um, then I left that because that was a fairly unsustainable family setup. Uh, to spend four days here and three days there with like a growing family. And then I, I took a little break and then I joined a small company called Bedit, uh, which was about like 14, 15 people at the time. Uh, spent 18 months there to build a new product uh, for sleep tracking. Um, and then we sold that company to Apple. Moved with my family to uh, Cupertino, spent three years in, uh, in California, uh, working mostly on health initiatives. So you basically go through like the top 10 reasons of premature death and then map a project to those. Um, learned a lot about, like, sort of say, you know, working with medical people, but also like a lot of design challenges, of course, you know, in the field. Um, uh, and then sort of say work mostly on like sleep related issues for the watch. Uh, which then led to, to uh, what, uh, you know, sleep trapping of the watch, which I think was released last year. Uh, and then that led to work uh, that's now called Focus, uh, which is almost, so to say, on every iPhone. Um, and I think the one thing that I learned at Apple is that, you know, if your solution isn't easy, you probably haven't understood the problem. Uh, and it's really like the sense of like, you know, wonder and going deeper and deeper and deeper into understanding exactly what the problem is you're solving. Uh, and that can be like a multi-year process sometimes. Um, you know, as an example for, for sleep, everybody sleeps, which makes it a great problem, but also almost in, infinitely difficult to capture what actually is, is the fact. And after about two years of work, we figured out you actually don't need to sleep, uh, measure sleep to improve it. Um, so the whole reason why the acquisition was taken was almost, so to say, obvious, uh, obsolete. Um, but, but it w didn't really matter because, you know, the fact that we figured that out was more important than having made a mistake like two years earlier. Um, and so now I'm sort of back at Swapi building a company, uh, you know, in the same way that we did at, at Bedit, but almost like a hundred times bigger and at a hundred times bigger scale. Um, and I feel that almost is a privilege because there are very few companies at that level that actually, you know, grow in like X numbers per year. Uh, not like 60%, not like 40%, but X, so 100, 200, 300. Um, and it's, it's a very interesting and unique journey to go through some of the challenges that are presented in that environment. Uh, hopefully maybe some of them I can share, share today. Um, but before we go into, into the details, I uh, just want to do a quick quiz. So, so who of you owns, owns a smartphone? So a raise of hands. Okay, that's like almost 100%. Um, so who of you have sort of swappy? Okay, that's maybe like 50%. Um, who knows somebody who has bought uh, from swappy? Okay, that's maybe 20%. Um, and who's planning to update their smartphone in the next two years? Okay. Great. So if you, if you map, sort of say, what this, the sentiment of this room into all the 15 countries that we operate in, then we almost, sort of say, would sell 25 million phones. 
Uh, just to give you a sense of like, so say, the scale of, of what, what we're doing and the, the immense opportunity that you have when you actually touch a product that is both functional and fashional uh, and almost the most used item in everybody's life today, uh, which is the smartphone. Um, so a so little bit background about Swapi. Uh, we are officially, for some measures, the fastest growing company in Europe. Uh, that is, so say, to take with a grain of salt because it looks at one year and then the next year and calculates, so to say, the arc. That might change next year uh, because the, the endpoints are different. Uh, but I think it's, it's a good proof that you can actually build, uh, you know, one of the fast growing companies in Europe based on an entirely circular model, um, which is good news, I think, for, for the, general, the general sense. Um, we, are, we are mostly based in Finland and in Estonia. Uh, we have about uh, 1,400, I think, employers now. Uh, when I actually joined uh, 1st of January last year, we had 420 employees, uh, just to give you a sense of, like, so say, the rapidness of this growth. Um, we have a revenue of about 100 million, uh, and, and we are like setting in 15 countries. Uh, Italy is our biggest country, uh, Germany, second biggest, Sweden. Um, so it's really like it is a very international and, and, and European company in many, many regards. Um, you can see this here. We, we are like a big advertiser because it's a very big market. You know, we're competing with all network operators in all, company, in all countries who have, uh, you know, perfected their marketing for 20 years, I assume. Um, but it's also like we're communicating the category because a lot of people are not aware of it. Uh, and of course, our brand itself. Um, and these are just some snapshots. So if you if you go to Lisbon or Rome or Berlin, there's a good chance that actually some somewhere there's a sort of say a swappy banner flashing by you. Um, we do a lot of like research uh, because our, our main problem is that 80% of our customers buy refurbished for the first time. So it's almost sort of say all new customers. Uh, it's very hard to understand the market if if you know eight out of ten people do something for the first time. Um, so, so we 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 talk to a lot of customers all the time, uh, and uh, and what we're hearing is that, you know, it's it's really still in the infancy. Uh, if if eight out of ten customers are doing something for the first time, you can see that you know this is very very early. Um, even less people actually have sold a phone. Um, it's very interesting. Uh, most people who actually did not sell a phone, they say that they want to keep it. Uh, as a like you know reserve, and then if you ask them, and have you ever used it, they're like no. <laughs> so really, you see like the behaviors that we have to break in, o in order to sort of say, make this happen. Um, some of the key challenges that we're hearing is is, is just generally a trust. Uh, you know, I think this goes back to the the, the the point earlier that you know big problems almost require industrial scale of like solutions, uh, and and the small mobile phone store on the corner is not associated necessarily with that. Uh, our head of brand, she comes from Turkey, and she kind of makes this joke that uh, when you go to Istanbul to a phone shop, they kind of ask you, like, okay, do you want to have a new model? And I can, you know, just slightly change to the one that you give me, and you get something new back, maybe add, add a camera or, or change the battery. Um, so, so, you know, there's a lot of, as I say, almost fraudulent behavior going on in the industry uh, that, of course, we battle with, too. Um, battery health is a huge, huge uh, question because battery is like a tire on a wheel. Um, so, so your battery degrades over time. So if you, ha if you buy a five-year-old smartphone, it's almost certain that the battery is, is crap. Um, and so we, we, we have our work cut out to sort of say, change the tires in the phone uh, to make it almost new again. Um, and then benefits are also quite clear. Um, so it's, it's cheaper generally to buy something that is used. Uh, which, you know, for many people is great for iPhones because they're typically seen as expensive. Um, so this is a, gives people an access to a technology that they simply couldn't afford before. Um, and, uh, and uh, you know, we can give over time the same warranties as, as you buy with a new phone because we are actually repairing them anyhow ourselves. Uh, and so, so, so these things are like, you know, just to give you an outset of the, the market, and this is like European research, 15 countries, you know, sentiments are slightly different from country to country, but, you know, broad spe spectrum, uh, it's still infancy, and, and we know the challenges very well. So 
when we then sit back and say, okay, what do you need to create as a product, as an experience for, for people? Uh, uh, it basically comes down to, to three things, and only two of them you actually need to do, because one, the third one comes for free. Um, so you almost need to sort of say, really focus on making high quality repairs, uh, which, which is easier said than done, uh, because it essentially means you almost need to get to the same level, level as making a phone. That is really industrial scale repair requires you to be almost as good and diligent and detailed as making a phone, uh, which is hard, actually. Um, and then the second thing is you need to make that accessible to more people, and there's a few ways to do that. One is, of course, you have a range of products, so older products are typically cheaper than newer products, uh, but you can also have a lot of uh, you know, financial services that make accessible tea uh, uh, you know, cheaper. Uh, and there's a lot of more people that have 100 euros out of pocket per month than like 800 on their saving accounts. And, and you know, we are very close partners of Kalana and Scalapay and others. And we see like markets like Portugal where like, you know, a good third of all buyers basically buy um, over, over installment plans because it just allows more people accessibility to the technology that was previously you know, exclusive to them. Um, and when you do these two things, uh, extra sustainability comes for free. <laughs> That's the, the, the beauty of our model. Uh, we don't actually have to work on sustainability because our entire system is built on circularity. Um, and, and as long as we can deliver better quality so people feel like what they're getting into their hand is, is as good as new, uh, and we can make that accessible to more people, um, it will almost inevitably be more sustainable, which is great because it sort of say, gives you this feel-good sense that uh, I was joking with, with, a, with a former colleague in the back that you know, when you go to a new store um, and you have this sense of like fast fashion store and you have this sense of like it feels bad to be in there, like you don't almost have that feeling at all when you come into an, a swappy store because everything is used um, that you find there. Um, so the, the reason why this works really well for us is because you know, we, we have built a circular model like in the background. Uh, we buy phones, we repair them, we sell them. Uh, you can buy them, you can rent them. You know, there's a lot of, so say, innovation in the in the backbone of this. Um, we buy from companies, we buy from individuals, we buy it through like traders. Um, we we almost so say build a whole ecosystem around purchasing from all over the world, um, and it's uh, it's. It works really well because sort of when you think about the consumer side of things and then the industrial side of things, these really work, work well in hand in hand and we're incentivized to make them all work better all the time. So, you know, many companies say that they want to be carbon neutral by 2030. Like, the more we sell, the better it is for the planet. It, it is inherent in the system. Um, so, so, some of the key things we, we need to think about uh, when, when we think about refurbishing Displays are a big part, uh, all sorts of internal parts, uh, cameras uh, and, and, and switches and flexes, uh, batteries, huge thing. Uh, and so you see us you know, becoming almost like industrialized experts in all of these, uh, but, but it also goes down back into like the sourcing chain, where we get our batteries from, what are the tests and certificates driven. Um, so almost like an ODM uh, that, that actually makes and manufactures these. Um, so let's recap. Uh, so Swapi is the fast growing company in Europe. Uh, we're selling currently in 15 countries. Category is still at its infancy. Circularity is driven by quality, accessibility, and sustainability. Uh, quality leadership requires, so say, broad skills in repairs. And uh, refurbishing and reselling are, so say, sustainability no brainers. Uh, it's a good market, <laughs> uh, but, but you can still screw it up. So, so it's not guaranteed that you're actually successful. Uh, even so, all the, all the angles are, are, are in place. And so, so, some of the things we have learned that work well for us uh, is that uh, we, we're, we're very strong like, so, so from a software industrial uh, uh, background. And, and so when you, when you build something new, and a new category almost has no proven models. So everything, or most things you do, are actually new. Um, you, you're better off building something small uh, some people call it an MVP. Um, it almost doesn't matter how you name it. Uh, but, but build something small and then try it out, see if it works, and then sort of say, learn from what works, what doesn't work, and then build the next version and the next version. Because you almost don't know how 
big it can get if you build forward. Um, so by thinking about like the whole thing, you, you almost inevitably, like if it's a good idea, you inevitably limit yourself about the potential, um, which you don't have if you just sort of say build forward from small to, to large. Um, the, the other thing we use is, is a very simple process um, which, which is called 4D. It's very focused on solving customer problems. Um, and we have very many different teams that are very individual uh, and aut atomic uh, in, in the way that they set their priorities and execute. Um, what, what we ask them is to sort of say, always start with the problem. Uh, and at every quarter, we look at the range of problems uh, and, and the potential impact that they can have. And then we prioritize together with the teams. Uh, we, we, we hope that they pick like one, max two, so that they can really focus on something and, and make progress. Um, this, is, this is what we've sort of used. Uh, it's very simple. Um, and, and the key thing is really that you have understood the problem you're solving. Um, because if you understand the problem you're solving, then three months is a long time to figure out a solution to the problem. If you have like software engineers and designers and everything at hand. Um, so you can make a lot of progress in, in three months. If you haven't understood the problem, it's, it's almost, it doesn't really matter how much time you give yourself because it almost becomes like a long period anyhow. Um, and, and one thing we've learned is like, we asked every team to do estimates. Like, you know, if we solve a battery, if we would repair all the batteries, what would the, be the estimate in, in, in revenue? There's, they're almost always wrong. Uh, because when you think about something new, you, uh, you don't know <laughs> what actually is the outcome. And it's, it's more important to think about the problem and what could be the impact than actually being right about the estimate that, that it does. And it goes both ways. We're like, you know, 2x overshooting and we're 2x undershooting. Uh, there, there's really no, no thing. The, the other thing we learned is that, you know, progress isn't, isn't linear. Sometimes you hit on something and you can make a lot of progress in a very short time. And then it takes you a long time to make more progress, and then you hit on something again. And if you, if you normalize that and average that across all teams, it's almost sort of linear. But, but that's very, uh, it's almost like useless um, because you need to coach the, each team at each point at, you know, where they are. And, and the team that is working on an exponential, like a 3x, 4x feature, needs something very different in terms of coaching than something that is more incremental. Um, so, so we see this all the, all the time, and while we're, we're trying to kind of like, of course, always find the, the highest impact things that we, we want to solve, um, it's, it's not guaranteed that they actually do, uh, and so it's, it's a little bit less predictable. Um, design for us is, is sort of say at the center of many things, um, and even so we are, we are, I would say, still very young as a design company. Um, you know, we, we have Apple as our as our so say, giant that we stand on, and, and everything about Apple is about design. Uh, so it's, it's almost, so to say, a natural part of it. Uh, but when I think about uh, when we think about design, it's like, you know, it really spans across deep understanding of, of customers and problems. Uh, it, it really, you know, is about creating simple and delightful experiences. Uh, and, uh, and of course, communicating them cohesively uh, and then, uh, then, then you know, taking people on the journey into the circular future, um, and and you know, our design and and you know, goals are very simple, uh, because if if buying and selling or swapping a phone would be as easy as buying a new one, we think a lot more people would do it, <laughs> and so almost everything we do is sort of say make everything that you interact with uh, for a free refurbished phone uh, easier every day. We look at Apple, that's sort of say, you know, that's sort of say, the, our, our Nostra. Um, and while we might never reach Apple, uh, I think we're going to pick up a lot of customers on our way from here to Apple uh, and, and hopefully build a, build a lasting and, uh, and large uh, company around it. Um, that, that's all I had. Um, maybe last thing for me is uh, uh, if, if you are looking for joining a company in the circular economy, look at our jobs. We're almost hiring. Uh, this is a fantastic opportunity to really think how this thing works, uh, because you almost can't conceptualize it from the outside. You have to really build it from the inside. Um, and uh, and uh, yeah, looking forward to your questions. Thank you. Awesome.
20 seconds. That was That's wonderful. <laughs> no, that was great. I was actually going to say about the job offer. My 12-year-old son is sending me to Swappy because I need to upgrade. And he was like, Mom, you yeah. need to go to Swappy. Yeah, but he might be uh, an employee for you as well. Yeah, he That's knows what... much more about all, yeah. Yeah, you know, my, my, I have three kids and, and they're all like, my oldest daughter, she's actually testing all covers and accessories with me. Uh, so I'm like trying to coach her, like sensibilities of like, you know, what's good functionality, what's bad. Uh, and then the other two are, are just sort of say users and yeah. testers. Well, super. Thank you for that very interesting uh, talk and uh, introduction. I think a lot of people know about Swappy, but uh, to go a little further, and for those who don't, introducing them to Swappy. Now we're going to open up the floor to questions uh, from our live audience or our online. Uh, yes, I see actually there's a question already here. Thank you, Udo. Uh, very insightful. One question you said, like, if uh, buying a refurbished uh, mobile would be equally delightful an experience than buying mm. a new one, yeah. you know, everybody would do it. My question is, like, mm. how isn't it? At least to me, I'm thinking of, I, there, I suppose there is like this uh, uh, sort of unpacking experience and everything sure. considered. So uh, adding this emotional uh, benefit, which is that I know I'm doing a good thing, why wouldn't they? Like, what is it that take? Like, what, what what is still needed in a way? No, I think it's a good question. Uh, so, I think one part of the answer is that if you're a young company, you have sort of say limited resources, and you're competing against the perception that sort of say the most the company with the most resources in the world is creating, um, and so you, you almost sort of say have to make many versions until you have the size and the scale and the resources and the capabilities available to you to create something that is close. Um, that, that's one thing. The other thing is like it's, it's simply almost like an awareness problem, you know? And, and they, of course, go hand in hand because if somebody opens and gets a present of a Swappy phone and it's almost as they get an iPhone, you know, they will tell their friends and they will tell, tell their, their friends. And so the, the customer satisfaction is key for us to growing like to the capacity because we, you know, we could compete so say, against every mobile phone operator in the world against their marketing budgets, uh, but th that's a tough, that's a tough uh, battle. Um, so we have to almost make feel, people feel like they're surprised when they get a phone from us uh, about how good it is, so that they can then tell their friends and their friends and their friends. So. Thank you. And um, yes, we have time for one more question. Can I have my phone? Cool. Thank you so much for that presentation, super insightful. Um, I'm sure it's a fast growing market and I'm guessing you're having challenges to meet demand. How, how long does it take on average to refurbish one phone? And how do you plan to scale that? Like what is the scalability of, of your company to be able to, to supply for, for this mass growing demand? Yeah, that's a good question. So, so obviously, you know, if you look at the phones we are getting, they are in many various different conditions. So some phones we buy and they're just great. We can sell them right away. Um, so the answer to your question then is like a day, <laughs> maybe it's like uh, some device we get, like the screen has a crack and we need to replace the screen. That's a much more involved, so to say, technical operation. Um, we, we don't try to, so to say, get one or the other. We just try to get use uh, good at all of them and almost, so to say, improve throughput time in our factory all the time, no matter what the repair is. Um, how scalable is that? We think it's pretty scalable. Uh, we don't think that there's a market cap, naturally, to, to you know, how many devices we can sell. Uh, it's, it's almost just to say, how many people know about you, how much capabilities can you have at a given time, uh, and sort of say, growing these at, the, at, the, at a so say balance, balance rate. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we, we add everything into the mix. People, robots, like whatever. <laughs> like, uh, just as, as, as you operate factory operations. You know, we, we, have, we opened up a factory in Tallinn, I think, early last year, and now it has 600 employees. So, yeah. The, uh, no, it's not, it's, not, it's not only like, it's, you know, some, some, for example, some tasks like cleaning a phone, right? Uh, nobody likes to do them. 
Uh, really, <laughs> uh, we, we've tried really hard. Um, so you know, having cleaning robots uh, is great for everyone. Uh, but then you know, if you want to micro solder like something in your device, uh, you know, you you really want to have an expert uh, for that. So it, it's really like a little bit like horses for courses, uh, and and take all the things that you can get and scale them at the same time. Thanks. I think that we, uh, we've run out of time. Thanks, Udo. And there will be an opportunity to ask questions at the very end.